talked about how to figure out what limits were by looking at the graphs. Today we're going to talk about how to actually compute limits. Okay, So when you're trying to compute a limit, the first thing you should always try to do is plug it in to see if the limit can be solved just by substitution. If it yields an indeterminate form, such as 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, those are the most common, then the, you have to do some algebra. Okay, So we're just going to go through and do three examples, uh, essentially, for this video to show you how to do this. Uh, so for example one, uh, let's look at the function. Let's look at the limit as x goes to 2 of x squared plus 3x minus 10 divided by x squared minus 4. So the first thing I do is I plug it in. Okay, What is the limit as x goes to 2? Let's see, because if this is a nice continuous function and it has nothing weird, in the last video we said it's just going to be equal to the value of the function at the value it's approaching. So if I plug in 2 here, I have a problem because 2 squared minus is 4 and minus 4 is 0. And then I'm dividing by 0, and that's bad. Okay, So we have to do some algebra, essentially. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to factor this. Um, and on top, I'm going to have x plus 5 times x minus 2. And on the bottom, I'm going to have x plus 2 times x minus 2. Now, from when we study rational functions, you should recognize that this is a removable discontinuity, that we have a hole at x equals 2. And when we did rational functions, we always said, you know, make sure you don't cancel this out because then it's a different function, right? It looks the same, but now the function has a value at x equals 2 instead of not. Here, we're doing the limit. I don't care what the value of the function is at x equals 2. Good thing I don't care because it doesn't exist. I want to know what is it getting closer to at x equals 2. So here, I'm actually going to cancel these out and I have x plus 5 over x plus 2. And technically, I should still have the, you know, the little limit as x goes to 2 out front here. Limit as x goes to 2. So now what I can do is I can plug in 2 here, and I get 7 fourths. And this is the location of my hole. Okay, So more importantly, yeah, it's the location of the hole. But this is the value uh, that the function is approaching as x gets closer and closer to 2. Okay, So we factored it out, we divided, and that allowed us to, to solve the problem. Let's look at another one. Example two. Let's look at the limit as x goes to 4 of x minus 4 over the square root of x uh, minus 2. So if I plug in 4, again, I'm going to end up with a 0 on the bottom, and that makes everyone unhappy. So there's two ways you can solve this. Uh, one, you can treat the top as a difference of squares, where you have the square root of x plus 2 um, times the square root of x minus 2 and factor it. Or you can multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of x plus 2. Uh, and that will give you x minus 4 on the bottom. Um, and you'll be able to, to do some cancellation as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, uh, let's factor the top. Because why not? So I get x square root of x plus 4, uh, sorry, plus 2 times square root of x minus 2 divided by the square root of x minus 2. So now, these will go away, and I'm left with the square root of x plus 2. And if I plug in 4, I get 2 plus 2, which is 4. And that's our answer here. Okay, So not as straightforward to factor as a top one. You might have to be a little bit creative in terms of how you're thinking about this. But uh, you know, fundamentally, you still are just factoring, simplifying, and then plugging in. Um, and again, I always forget there should be little limit signs here, because that's still technically we're taking the limit. So for example number three, let's go up by a power. Let's do the limit as x goes to two of x cubed minus eight divided by x minus two. So again, first thing we always wanna to try to do is plug in two. And again, I get zero on the bottom, so that doesn't work. If we just had, like if I didn't have the bottom and I just had the top, that'd be fine. Because then I would have, you know, two cubed is eight, eight minus eight is zero, and I'd be set. I'd say, okay, the limit as x goes to two is zero. It's only because we have this denominator uh, that we're going to have to do some more work. So you have to remember how to factor a difference of cubes. Um, and this is going to give you x minus 2 times x squared plus 2x plus 4 divided by x minus 2. So now these will cancel out. I can plug in uh, 2 into this equation, and I get 12. So that would be my limit there. Okay. So when you're computing limits, all you do, you plug it in. If it gets, gives you something that indeterminate, divided by 0, divided by infinity, etc., 
that just means that um, you have to factor. And once you factor, you're gonna cancel stuff out and that's okay to do because you don't care about the real value of the function at that point, you care about what value it's approaching at that point, okay? So that's how you would go about computing limits.